everyone I have something a little different for this training Tuesday this is our almost four-year-old diamond python m14 and when he was younger I used to have him do a lot of foraging exercises it dawned on me that it's been about two years since I had him engage in any kind of foraging exercise or activity like the one you saw on that table he's been target training since he was a baby as well and really for the last couple of years all I've been doing with him is target training so I decided to see if he remembered how to do a foraging exercise. I already made it a little bit difficult for him because instead of opening the door that he was at, I opened the opposite door. So to help him out a little bit, I showed him his target and asked him to exit his enclosure to engage in the activity. Now he doesn't have a specific target that tells him he can come out or that signals him to engage in this particular activity. So I targeted him to an identical target to the one I used to feed him with. And I had his prey item hidden in that purple cup right at the base of the duplicate training target so that when I targeted him to this exercise and to the duplicate target, the food was right there for him to find. I just didn't know if he would take it since it wasn't moving and I wasn't feeding him on tongs, but he did. So I was encouraged by this and I thought maybe he would remember how to do this exercise. Now I've moved the target over to this puzzle feeder and I've placed it near another rodent. And I did that while he was eating his first rodent. He went back inside his enclosure and then he turned around and he's coming back out now. And I was hoping that he remembered his old foraging exercises and that he would come out and really engage with this activity. And he didn't really do that. He, he remained quite calm and quite slow. You could tell this was sort of familiar to him, but that it's been quite a while since he's done it. So this footage right here is actually sped up. He was very slow and methodical about the way he was investigating all of these different items. And you'll see here in just a minute, or you should be able to realize if you watch his body language closely, when he recognizes his target. And I was very encouraged by that because normally I am holding the target, I'm standing behind the target, Sometimes I move the target and have them follow it and then I feed them on tongs. But here I could tell that he sees the target and he's moving towards it. Now the target just sitting there is new for him. I was really encouraged by how active the tongue flicking got here and by how long he stayed at this puzzle feeder. But if you haven't already seen my mistake, I made a mistake here watching this footage after the fact and actually watching him as he engaged in this, I wish I had put the rodent in that cup directly under his head, the one directly in front of the target, but it's in the one to the left of his head. It's actually closer to the target than the cup that's in front of the target. But I think looking back, he would have had an easier time finding it if it was in that cup right there that he keeps engaging with. And that's because it's directly in front of his training target. And I was just dying to help him here, but I wanted to give him enough time to engage with the activity to see if he would find the other rodent and if he would eat it out of the puzzle feeder. This whole activity went on for about 45 minutes, perhaps close to an hour. And that's okay. Part of the reason you do foraging exercises is to prolong the hunting process, prolong the feeding process, give the snake physical exercise and mental stimulation. So you're not just basically feeding the snake and you're done and they're done and now they have no activity to do till they decide they wanna do something else. So he's really engaging here. And I really thought that he was gonna find that item, but he didn't. And I ended up moving it to the cup I think I should have initially put it in. And he actually went right to the rodent and sniffed it, but never took it out of the cup. 
And so I ended up using the tongs to take it out of the cup, thinking that this would help him out. I've set it right in front of his target. He's staring at it. As is typical of his species, he gets in an ambush position and he's sitting there and waiting for it to move. And by this time, again, it's been probably close to an hour. So it's room temperature now. It's no longer warmer than room temperature. And he just wasn't going for it. He was smelling it. He was in an ambush position near it, but he wasn't going for it. And I think he was waiting for it to move. Again, their natural history is they follow a scent trail to a location, they get in an ambush position, and they sit and wait for the prey to move under them or in front of them. I didn't want his training target to lose meaning for him, so I went ahead and helped him out, and I feed him the rodent off of tongs like I normally do. Because again, for the last two years, we've been doing target training now let's move on to our bull snake, Rodney. I had targeted her out of her enclosure to that activity stand. I had reinforced her with a rodent for following the target out. I left her out and put this puzzle feeder down below, which didn't take her any time at all to move down to. And I made her first find very easy because this is the first time she's engaged with this particular puzzle feeder. The other small rodents, which are just fuzzy mice, are hidden in the wells of this puzzle feeder, which is actually for my puppy Galaxy. And as you can see, her behavior is quite different from the pythons. And this is more in line with the natural history of how colubrids hunt. They're active foragers, they go out and look for food, and they follow scent trails to the prey and they eat it, whether it's dead or alive, many times. And she barely had that swallowed and she's already looking for the next one. So this process with Rodney is going much quicker and that's not necessarily a good thing. Again, we're trying to occupy their minds and give them physical exercise. So if she finishes too quickly, to me, that's not really challenging for her. And so in order to extend the activity and the foraging time, I make things a little bit harder for her it wasn't that hard for her. She found all of the items I hid. Now you might notice there's one kind of in front of her head there that she's bypassing and that's because she found that one first. And when she was moving the well cover out of the way, she tried to stick, well she did stick her big head under the well cover with the rodent and everything got squished under that before she was able to get it open and the rodent popped open and some snakes i've noticed won't eat the prey if it's broken open and there's blood and guts and everything coming out and so she is just not eating that one for that reason everybody thanks for watching i hope you found that interesting and i think it's an interesting comparison and that what i might even do in the future is have a python and a colubrid both engage in the exact same exercise and see how they each approach it. I think that would be something really interesting to see, so let me know what you think.